In this video, I'm going to give you 10 things you can be doing in the garden, sort of between now and Christmas, really, preferably actually before the first frost. All right, let's get into it. Number one is to tidy up the garden. So I especially need to do that. And that's going to look different for everyone, depending on what your garden is and how you, how you style your garden, what design you have. So if you grow a lot of perennials like me, for instance, you're going to need to cut those back because they start to look very scruffy and dead. Uh, other things that you can be doing, obviously, is cutting back any overgrown trees or branches that have, uh, you know, bolted over the summer and things like that. Sweeping up leaves, all those kinds of just maintenance things. As I say, it's going to look different for everybody. That is a great thing to do is tidy up your garden. That doesn't mean sort of kill everything and dig everything up. It just means tidying it up so that you can sort of then plan uh, the next step, which is, of course, where you're going to put all the plants that you're going to sow, which we're going to do in my next video. Number two, tidy up the greenhouse. So related to number one is tidy up the greenhouse and also clean the greenhouse glass or plastic, as I had to do, because mine went really green. We have had a really wet summer and autumn and there was like green, like algae all over the plastic. So I've cleaned that off because, first of all, it looks unsightly. And second of all, it was it blocks. It actually did block quite a significant bit of the sunlight. So and of course, it's just a vector for disease and mold. So clean that off. I used just an ordinary kitchen spray with a bit of bleach in it. And then I wiped it off with kitchen roll because, of course, if, you, if you're doing plastic, you've got to be really gentle. You don't want to put a hole in the plastic. And then I just rinsed it all off with water. So and then, of course, in turn, Finally, over the summer, I sort of start chucking things in here and there and growing plants that have got bolted or whatever. So all that needs tidying up and getting ready for all the things I'm going to sow. So that's number two. Number three is bulb planting. So bulb planting you can do any time now, between now and also, you know, earlier if you've already started, that's fine. But I, I tend to think you can do any time up to Christmas Eve as long as you're not due a frost because obviously you can't bulb plant when there's frost but you do have to do it this side for me christmas is kind of the cut off point because you need the bulbs to have time to grow the roots because they grow the roots first and then they'll grow the shoots when the conditions are right in the early winter sort of late winter spring so bulb planting is something you can do now bulbs of course tulips alliums crocus those kinds of things would be fine to plant now number four along uh, with tidying up is the cutback of perennials so the perennials of course especially very tall ones like my yarrow and I've got some greater napweed, which is just really pretty. I've got sweet rocket. All that needs cutting back and, you know, getting rid of all those dead stems and dead flower heads. And then, you know, that will bring, you'll see the new shoots coming up on the soil down below at the base of the plant. Per, uh, peonies are another one. If you haven't cut them back already, just cut them back. A peony will regrow from completely new shoots. So you can just get rid of all those dead peony leaves. And basically any kind of hardy perennial can be cut back now. Five related to that is dividing perennials. You can divide your perennials. So it's usually I would say divide perennials when they get really big. For instance, something like Shasta daisies or a yarrow can definitely be divided or transplanted. So hardy perennials can be divided when they're sort of two or three or four years in uh, and they've got really big and mobbish. Then you can just dig up the root ball, chop it in half. I'll link my video dividing my Shasta daisies below. And then plant the clumps elsewhere or pot up a clump and give it to a friend. Okay, uh, number six is to move tender plants into the greenhouse. Or if you don't have a greenhouse, obviously put them in the conservatory or somewhere that's nice and light but warm that will protect them from frost. Number seven, if you've got any fruits left to harvest, then do that before they rot. I mean, for us, for me, they're over. Everything that I grew is over my pears blackberries, things like that. My tomatoes were gone long since finished. So um, if you if you're lucky enough to have a mild enough season that you still have things that you can harvest, then obviously do that before those frosts set in and turn everything to mush. And similarly, number eight is finish collecting your seeds. I find this time of year, it, I don't really tend to bother, especially because it's been so wet. The seed heads now on any ripening flowers that I have left. I still have some straw flowers, for instance, and they're kind of soggy. But, you know, if the seeds look good and they haven't got mildew on them, uh, you can still dry them off indoors. So if, if I do get a good seed head, I will dry it off indoors and keep it. But generally, I like to have done all my seed collecting before now 
But that's not to say that you can't still collect seeds now. You can, just make sure you're not collecting ones that have mildew. And in some cases, they actually rot. You can't save those seeds, but you still can find ones that haven't. Hollyhock, for instance, I just harvested some hollyhocks. They don't seem to be affected by the uh, damp weather. They've still kind of dried out and they are good to collect. So just have a look around and see what you have in your garden. Number nine is pruning climbers and ramblers. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do a separate video on that because mine, uh, mine are going to have a hard cut back this year because we've had, I've had rust on them so I'm going to treat them for that and I'm going to cut them back and you know roses I do my shrubs actually in uh, the other side of Christmas and so it's good to be able to spread your jobs out like that so I do my I'm going to do my ramblers and climbers should be done kind of nowish and then your shrubs can wait your uh, shrub roses rather can wait until sort of uh, late January, February when they maybe start to regrow. But the good thing about cutting them back is you put them into dormancy, which is good. It helps the rose rest a bit and, you know, you can just clean it up and get rid of all those diseased stems and make sure when you get rid of those diseased stems that you do take them off, off site, you know, take them to your local recycling centre or whatever, because you don't want that disease going on your compost heap or anywhere back in the garden. So just try and practice some hygiene around roses because we all know we all know how temperamental roses are to disease. And then number 10 is something I am desperate to do. But even as I record now, I can hear the rain has started again and that is to mow. It's your last chance to mow. It's mild enough here that the grass is still growing, but it's so wet, there's no way I can do any mowing. So it's actually quite frustrating. The garden does look quite scruffy when I can't control the grass. I should have done it a couple of hours ago. It was too wet, but at least it wasn't raining. And now I've missed my chance because it's raining again now. So that's it, number 10. Mow if you can, because that really does help the garden look a lot tidier, as we all know. Those are the 10 things that I'm certainly going to be doing in the next you know I started today and uh, well I didn't start today I started you know a few weeks ago and I'm going to continue on till Christmas getting these jobs ticked off the list and then we'll be ready for next year's growing season all right thanks for watching bye